guys, welcome back! I mentioned at the end of last episode that I've been thinking about unlocking some new mods and that I was going to think about it between episodes, and I have been thinking about it, but I still haven't quite decided, so I I'm going to keep thinking about it. However, I do know that I really want to unlock Bruce, so let's get that sorted. So if we make a brew, I will go for the pacifist's brew, and it is quite expensive with needing an echo pog, but at least I only need to make it once. Oh, that is a big craft, but that is going to help us so much. It heals 10 hit points, and then it can heal us even more by adding regeneration for 60 seconds, because I just love having regen on this so much. And then, while we're on the topic of getting upgrades, I think it's about time that I make a new sickle for breaking all of the special chests. Now, mine does have some durability left and a repair left, but I think if I make a black chromatic tool, I can get so many more modifiers than I currently have. So, I think I have everything I need to make a black chromatic steel sickle. So let's see what sort of things we can put on this. And I think this is about the best I can do with my current jewels. As you can see, I've got one capacity left, so I've really tried to maximize this as much as I can. And what we've managed to achieve is coin affinity and ornate affinity, of course, 54% trap disarm chance, which is very nice, a decent chunk of mining speed, 22.2% item quantity, which is amazing, Gilded and Living Affinity, of course, some extra durability, 16.7% item rarity, and 0.73 reach. Most of the reach is also happening to be combined with something else, but it's definitely going to help us mine chests from further away, which is always incredibly helpful. And I think this is the best I can currently do. The tool that comes after this doesn't unlock until level 80, so we're quite a long way from getting even more capacity. So I think this should be really good. And I mean, even if it's not amazing, it's at least better than this, because this has basically 2.4% item rarity and 1.3% item quantity. And that's kind of it. And this has, you know, 54% trap disarm, 20. 2.2% item quantity and 16.7% item rarity and 0.73 reach. So it's definitely a bit of an improvement from our current tool. And I think, I mean, we're guaranteed to get way better stuff and also more stuff by using this. And I think, I think this is going to be worth it. This is going to be so good. Oh, well, let's just do it. I hate pressing these buttons. We did it. Look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. I really need to make sure I enchant this though. Let's go do that now. And that is going to be so good for us. I can't wait to try this out. And the last thing we need to do before making a crystal and heading into a vault to try out the sickle is fix my helmet because, you know, 4% durability isn't going to get me very far. And now that's all sorted, let's get a crystal. And let's also select a new bounty. We've got find 36 Volt Essence and get a rare chest plate and a fundy, that's very nice. And find 30 Silver Scrap, that should be easy enough. And get a mystery egg. Okay, let's do this one first. And let's see how both our sickle and our new brew performs inside the vault. What's it gonna be? We have... Ooh! Okay. Scav. Been a while since we've had a scav. We want nine purple mob essence. Shouldn't be too bad. Three empty jars. One zombie brain. Might be interesting. Three skeleton wishbones. As long as we find an ore room, that should definitely be doable. And then six red scrolls, which, if you go by my previous track record, will either be incredibly easy or basically impossible to achieve. So this should be interesting. Zombie brain and finding those living chests is definitely going to be important along with finding gilded. And we don't need anything from wooden, which is a shame. It's always very nice when you just need something from wooden, but shouldn't be too bad, hopefully. And we don't need anything from coins, so. Oh boy. 
And what theme is this? Is this one of the sweet themes? I can't actually remember, but it looks cute. Oh, and the first room we go into is a gilded village room. Oh, I apparently brought my ender anchor in. That was unintentional, but okay. What are we doing? Man, we've already got five red scrolls. Yeah, this was definitely a clutch room to find. I can't lie. And that's our red scrolls done. We also completed our bounty, so that was also incredibly easy, blimey. Yeah, okay, let's see if I can work out how to get out of here, because as much as I love it, we've now got eight red scrolls, and I really need to work on getting everything else, including that zombie brain. That's definitely going to take a while. Ooh, crystal cave. I do need skeleton wishbones, and I don't currently have any. This could be- that's an echo. Okay, yep. We're definitely gonna go loot that. Hi! Yeah, it's a champion. Hi, bird. Thank you for the epic plus unidentified vault helmet. That is perf potentially perfect timing, given I just had to fix my helmet, and I think I used its last repair as well. Oh, and that is our last skeleton wishbone. Wonderful. Let's get out of here then. We are getting very lucky with some of the rooms we're finding. First we get all of the red scrolls we need, and then we get all of the skeleton wishbones. Now if we could get some form of living, that's just another crystal cave. Um, nope. I don't need anything from here. We just got everything from these. Let's keep going, because I've actually only got 14 minutes. Which is not all that long, considering I still need a zombie brain. 12 minutes? Mm, that's very tempting. That is some living chests, finally, though. Oh, let's just do it. Kill dweller mobs. 26. Okay. We have 12 minutes? Oh yeah, we'll be out of it by the time that runs out. Oh, and we got a creeper eye and a zombie brain! That is fantastic. Okay, so we have one more creeper eye right towards our bounty, and we finally have the zombie brain, which means we need two more purple mob essence, all of the empty jars, but we have the zombie brain, the skeleton wash bones, and the red scrolls. I feel like, and this might just be placebo, because, like, I'm not that objective with these things, but I feel like we've been getting so many more, like, jewels and everything than usual, which... I would put down to having the new tool, which would be very awesome if that was true. That's another creeper eye. Right? We haven't found a single ornate chest. If you'd have asked me to predict what would be the difficult thing to get, I wouldn't have said empty jars. I probably would have stuck with the red scrolls. We just got so lucky with finding that village room. Well, I know that gate anywhere. That is a paint bucket room. Hello. Don't suppose any of you want to be on Nate chests, do you? Because that would be very convenient. Oh, you do! Okay, that's two empty jars. Perfect. Oh, and that's another creeper eye. We are actually getting so close to finishing our creeper eye bounty, which feel felt like I was going to have it forever. But if we actually complete that, that would be amazing. Aha! Come on, please give me an empty jar. Just one. That's all I need. Yes! Oh, we did it. We got so ridiculously lucky with some of the rooms that we found in this. If we hadn't have found that gilded village room, if we hadn't have found those crystal caves, that would have been a very different story.
Okay, 197 chests is not bad considering we ran past practically every wooden one that we found. 289 mobs, 72 ores and 39 coin piles. Yeah, we found 44 living chests and 47 gilded chests. Man, that gilded village room was so good to us. And also, that paint bucket room just absolutely knocked it out of the park. And we also managed to find like three creeper eyes in that vault. So I think we only need to find one more to complete that bounty. That was so good. Okay, that vault was a ton of fun. And even though I think we looted generally less chests than we normally do, we got an absolute ton of loot from it. I mean, we got a bunch of knowledge essence to add to our ever growing stash a fundamental focus, an echo ore, nine gear pieces, and you know how I mentioned I felt like I was finding more jewels than usual? Uh, yeah, I, I think I might have been right about that. Plus, we completed our bounty, made huge strides in our other bounty, and we also completed the vault, which means we get to open our crates. And we got an artifact. <laughs> Oh boy! Oh, yeah, that vault was great. That vault was pretty great. Can't lie, can't lie. Liked that vault quite a lot. As for our jewels, there are a lot of them, and I think I'm going to be keeping these top two rows. So I'll try and go through these very quickly. We have size 19, 21% vanilla immortality, which is nice. Size 18, mining speed and durability, which is a great combination. So definitely worth keeping. Size 27, legendary copiously. 27 is obviously a little bit bigger, but considering it's got a legendary copiously roll, I definitely think that's worth keeping hold of. Size 25, hammer size. As I've mentioned before, hammer size is one of the rarest things to find on a jewel, so no matter what size, I'm always going to keep hold of that. Size 12, 10% trap disarm, which is very nice. Size 27, another hammer jewel. I can't believe we actually managed to find two of these, but that is also very nice. Size 11, 8% traps of Sam is nice. Size 20, 2.8% copiously, which is a very high roll for copiously, so I think it's worth keeping hold of. A size 11, 20% vanilla immortality, which is very good. A size 26, legendary 4.8% item rarity, which is very nice and a very high legendary roll at that considering the max is five so absolutely love that gonna keep hold of it size 14 2.6 reach size 10 durability and once again almost a max roll on the durability so that is close to perfect in terms of a durability jewel so that's lovely and then a size 17 legendary durability so 100 percent keeping hold of that as well i do love me some durability Size 12, 24% vanilla immortality is very nice. Size 13, copiously and durability. These are very good rolls and also work together wonderfully. So 100% keeping hold of this for the next time we make a copiously tool. And then finally, a size 13, mining speed and vanilla immortality, which will be great for just making a very fast overworld mining tool. So we got some fantastic jewels out of that obviously there's a lot that i'm not keeping hold of but we managed to find a lot that are really really good so i am absolutely thrilled about that and as for all this gear oh we got a new transmog from the helmet and we actually managed to get some really interesting gear pieces from this so first we have our epic plus helmet which turned into this 19 armor helmet which if i actually look Apart from the crit hit resistance implicit, it's generally really, really good. It's got a better attack damage than I have and the same health and additional durability. So potentially we could do some suffix re-rolling on this and it might be worth swapping to. I definitely think I would miss the critical hit resistance that I currently have, but it could be worth experimenting with. So I'm very interested by that. And then we have this 19 armor rare chest plate with plus 8 armor and plus 8 health, which is very nice. And I'm not sure whether or not I'd swap this out for my current chest plate, because as much as it's definitely more defensive, it's not going to have as much space as my current Omega chest plate to have all of the different modifiers that I like. But it's definitely worth keeping hold of and better than some of my backups. So definitely keeping hold of that. Then we have this 29 attack damage sword, which is 
one better than my current one. Once again, we have an insanely good prefix for 34 attack damage, and I'm not sure that I'd managed to roll something that good on this, but definitely worth keeping hold of. And then we have these two 20 armor chest plates, which are both very interesting and definitely worth keeping hold of. I don't know, I feel like this is probably a better base just because it has the perfect prefixes for me with armor and health, but you never know what you might roll on these. And then I'm not going to be keeping this because unfortunately it's only scrappy, but look at that legendary 11 armor. I mean, that's just insane. And it's got an implicit of 20 armor as well. Like, that has so much defense. Unfortunately, like I said, it's scrappy, so there's no room to have additional health or anything else, but that is a pretty nice legendary. And then finally, of course, we have to see what artifact we managed to roll from this. We currently have seven of the 25 unique artifacts, so we've already had one duplicate and there is still a pretty good chance of getting another duplicate, but there is still a better chance of getting a new one. So, oh, let's see what we get. Ah, oh, it's a duplicate. Oh well, it does mean that we've got two artifact fragments ready for when we need them because I believe you can burn any duplicate artifacts you have and you will get an artifact fragment and then you can use four artifact fragments to make a new unidentified artifact. So when we need them, we can burn both of those and see if we can get a new artifact from them. Oh, that was a fun run. And now I've actually remembered to take my ender anchor off. Let's see about getting another crystal because I just really want to get into another vault because that one was so much fun. And we did manage to complete our bounty in the last vault, so we can either kill 22 tank mobs, oh, and get a, two black chromatic steel and a fundy, that would be nice, or yes, we had this one before, to find 30 silver scrap inside the vault for the mystery egg. You know what, let's take this one because I think it should be relatively easy and then we can take the tank mob one. And let's see what we get. What have you got for us? Ooh, that's a lot of monoliths. I think that's 10 monoliths we need to find. Okay, I mean, we'll see how this goes. Might just focus a bit more on looting and seeing what we can find. And then if we happen to find all the monoliths, that would obviously be amazing but I do tend to find that just running to try and find them can make the vault a little bit boring sometimes, so might just focus more on exploring and maybe seeing if we can find a tre that treasure door, because we have a we have an Ashium key. It would be so nice to find that. I mean, that is completely luck. That's much rarer than finding a monolith, but if we happen to find it, that would be a lot of fun. So, uh... Let's try this. I also love this theme. It is so bright and absolutely lovely. Oh, and there's even a strength pylon, I believe. Yes, I will definitely take an extra level in strength for three minutes. That sounded like a champion. Yes, it was. Hello. I'm still trying to learn the noise that a champion makes. I've just got an unidentified treasure key. Um, sorry, my brain is currently blue screening. I just got... Hmm, okay, um, in case you didn't know, because I didn't, um, champions can give you unidentified treasure keys, which is... Uh, that's... That's very good. That's very, very good. Oh, boy. I... Hmm... I like that a lot. Brain is currently still processing. Sorry. Um, just gonna take me a minute to recover my train of thought. I don't remember what I was originally trying to say. Probably nothing important. Okay, that is easily the best thing I've ever had from a champion. I think the best thing before this was probably... I think we got a lost bounty from one of them once, and that was really fun. I do love the Lost Bounties, but I mean, you can't, I'm not sure there's anything that you can get that would ever be better than an unidentified treasure key. Oh, 
that is another champion, right? That's a skeleton. Wonderful. Hi. That's a trip. What is happening with the champions inside this vault? One of them gave us an unidentified treasure key. The next one gives us both a trinket and some epic plus boots. What? Where's the like? Oh, here's a rare vault axe. That's that's the normal way that works. Jesus. Okay. Apparently, I just need to try and find champions in this vault because my luck with them is frankly ridiculous. Oh, sorry, blue screening again. This is um, making up for the fact I can't find any monoliths. That is not overly a concern to me. Like. Did I just appear out of the ground like an actual skeleton rising from the grave? Because that was amazing. Oh, good. And that is our bounty complete. I knew that one was going to be pretty easy. Ah, okay, there is one. I will take another monolith. Thank you very much. Might not be actually intending to complete it at this point, but I'll at least click them when you see them. I do like that the archers especially just end up shooting themselves to death on my thorns. That's quite satisfying considering how much of a pain they can be, especially earlier in the game. To know that they're just slowly whittling themselves away is quite satisfying. Let's head back. Oh! Well, I think I said this last time, but I recognise that railing anywhere. I don't fully understand why we managed to find these relatively frequently, but I love it. I absolutely love it. And this has a ton of coin POIs in it. And a, quite a lot of buckets. This is amazing. Well, that was a good time to decide to turn around. And there's even another monolith. That's a new champion. Are you going to give us something also ridiculous or are you going to be normal? You're normal. Okay, that's... Honestly, thank you. I don't think I could have handled it if you would have been like, and now here's a lost bounty. Because that would have just been... That would have been a lot. That would have been quite a lot. So, thank you in a very strange way for being not amazing. My brain can only handle so much in one vault. Oh, thank you. May as well click it. Oh hi, you're a champion. That's nice. You also are stuck in the water, which is convenient for me. Ow. That knockback, my friend, was unneeded. Thank you for the helmet, but you, you didn't need to do all that. Oh boy, I mean that was a very, very different vault than I expected it to be, but I am not complaining about it. That was crazy. And we didn't do too bad, we got a lot of coin piles, 275, and then 200 chests, which is always good, and 300 mobs. And actually, a really good spread on chests, I mean over 30 on each of the special chests? is a really good split. I mean, obviously, the pink bucket room definitely helps in that situation, but that was a really, really good vault. Okay, there is a lot to say about that vault. First off, it was a lot of fun to just run and not really care about the objective all that much, so that was a really nice change of pace for me. So I might start doing that more often, especially if I get monoliths. And then, I mean, look at the loot that we just got. An absolute ton of bronze, more than enough silver scrap for our bounty, a waxing focus, two charms, 14 gear pieces, like 20 jewels, and then of course our trinket and unidentified treasure key from our champions. And actually on top of all of that, we also completed our bounty. So we just had such a good run. But before we can get to the key or the trinket, let's slow it down and take a look at our jewels. And we got some really nice ones. So we have this very nice size 17 reach jewel, a size 17 mining speed, and it's a very low roll on mining speed, but almost a max roll on reach. 
So depending on the type of tool I'm building, that could be very, very nice. A size 15 mining speed again, it's very nice. Size 15, 18% vanilla immortality and axing, which if I was making an overworld vanilla tool, which I am going to have to make at some point, that could be quite nice to put on it for only size 15. Size 14 durability, which is very nice. And another size 14 durability with one durability different. Then we have this very nice 3% copiously. Unfortunately, the copiously and the trap disarm don't really work together at all, but size 19 for 3% copiously is definitely worth keeping hold of. And then finally, we have this size 10 durability and mining speed jewel, which is very nice and work well together beautifully. And then as for this gear, I think I'm just going to be keeping these three. So of course, currently I'm sort of keeping all of the charms just because they seem quite useful. And this one is a quite nice 14% Idona with 20 uses and then an 8% Valara with 19 uses. So both of those are very nice. And then I'm also going to keep these boots, not because in themselves they're currently amazing. 18 armor and 28 ability power isn't great, but I think it's probably worth keeping hold of them just because they're epic and therefore I can do a fundamental reroll, hopefully get 19 or 20 armor and maybe some critical hit resistance. And then they're going to have all of the potential for prefixes and suffixes. So I think I'm going to keep hold of these, even though they're not currently quite what I'd want. And then I think we should see what we roll from this trinket. I am very intrigued. We've had a really good run of getting new trinkets, so I am kind of expecting this one to be a duplicate, but I will take whatever trinket it would give me because all trinkets are good trinkets. Ooh, Wendar's Hourglass, that is new. What does that do? Adds two and a half minutes to the vault timer. Okay, that, that is really good. Two and a half minutes, depending on the vault, can mean a lot. Like, if you use this inside Chaos Vaults or anything where you're going in where you've built it and it's really specifically built, an extra two and a half minutes of that sort of a vault could be so good. Oh, and 23 uses is actually really good as well. Ooh, I really like that. That has a lot of potential. And then finally, we need to see what this unidentified treasure key is. I am pretty sure we've never had one of these before. So that is kind of insane. It's got to be one of the rarest things to get. That I just, mm, let's see what we roll. Let's just see what we get. Ooh, an upper lean key. Now we can keep an eye out for both an upper lean door and an ashium door. And we've practically doubled our chances of actually finding a door in the next vault. Well, I think we've got time for one more vault today, and I think I just want to run another random vault. The last two have both been a ton of fun in quite different ways, so I just want to see what we get and roll with it. So, we'll need a crystal. And then we'll need to take a new bounty, and we've got this one to kill 22 tank mobs. And let's see what objective we get this time. And we have, ooh, okay, a scav which wants two zombie brains. Okay, two red scrolls and four green bangles and 22 rip pages. I mean, the rip pages shouldn't be too bad. 22 is quite a few, but... We mine a lot of wooden chests. Two red scrolls, in theory, should be doable. But four green bangles and two zombie brains. That is going to be a little bit trickier. Let's just see how this goes. I do not know how this vault is going to play out. And that's, honestly, a summary of why vault hunters can be incredibly fun. Maybe we'll get stupidly lucky and we'll get a zombie brain from one of these. Oh, no, instead we got a creeper eye and completed our bounty for the chaos catalyst. Okay. 
I will definitely take that as a compromise. Even if we don't complete this, even if we do nothing else and nothing else comes from this vault, that was most definitely worth running this. Oh, we've had that on for so long. I can't believe we actually completed it. Hey, I actually don't need any more creeper eyes. So if you could downgrade me to a zombie brain, that would be really nice. Thank you. I am very glad that you listened. Um, kind of surprised that you did. I do still need one more of them, but... Uh, that was a surprisingly effective negotiation, I can't lie. Didn't think that was going to work anywhere near as well as it did. Ooh, what are you? Normal... Ooh, and coins! With at least one green bangle for me. Thank you very much. This is... Um, two green bangles, okay. Thank you for three mod boxes, boom. Well, let's get out of here. That was a very nice dungeon. We have exactly the right number of red pages. Perfect. We still need one more zombie brain. We haven't found any red scrolls and we've got all of the green bangles. Okay. We really need to find some gilded. I do wonder if this is going to be a classic case of red scrolls causing me some issues. Hopefully not, but it has been a while since they've lived up to the reputation that they earned so they might want to just have a bit of fun with that hey what are you challenging and ornate okay thank you for my bounty completion what are you kill 50 assassin mobs well that's not really likely gonna happen. What are you? Difficulty normal. Ooh, guild adjusts. Hey, you know you really wanna give me some red scrolls. Okay, apparently you really don't wanna give me some red scrolls, but maybe the ones down here do. Oh, that's two champions. Okay, hi. One red scroll. Okay, ooh, two. Okay. We just need one more zombie brain. If I can just find some living chests. But we did complete both of our bounties inside this vault, which I definitely did not expect to do. We got so close on that run. For a second. For a second, I thought we were actually going to do it. But... We still got a ton of loot from that, I'm pretty sure. And we completed both bounties, so... 100% worth it. And we leveled up! Ooh, 181 chests and 168 coin piles. We found 15 living chests. So we didn't actually- we just couldn't find them. But that was... a ton of fun. Blimey. Level 70. And once again, that vault was a lot of fun, and in yet another different way than the other two, which is really quite interesting. And we also, once again, got a ton of loot. This time we managed to get 5 mod boxes, a fundamental focus, 20 pieces of gear, and 20 jewels. And on top of that, we managed to complete both of our bounties. Which means we now have our hands on yet another Chaos Catalyst. As for our jewels, we're going to keep hold of this very nice flawless jewel with item rarity, living affinity and durability, definitely worth keeping hold of. Then we have this size 11 8% trap disarm, which is very nice. Size 15, and I think for this one I'd be keeping it for the trap disarm, because obviously they don't work together. But 10% trap disarm for size 15 is actually really good, so definitely keeping hold of that. Size 11 mining speed, it's always worth keeping hold of. This legendary reach is 
so good and combined with durability and pulverizing and considering I did mention really wanting to make sure I put reach on a new copiously tool when I eventually make one that would be very helpful in terms of adding to that and size 26 isn't bad so that is very nice. Then we have a size 22 9% trap disarm and finally a size 22 2.8% item rarity. So we got some very nice jewels from that run. And from our gear, I think I'll be keeping these top four. So first we have this block chance shield, which I pretty much stick with thorns and I really, really like my thorns damage shield. But I do think it's worth keeping hold of a block chance shield or two just in case I want to try them out. And this is better than my current backup. So definitely keeping hold of that. Then we've got this 19 armor rare chest plate with a legendary 38% trap disarm chance. I mean, that's just so good. I probably wouldn't move to this straight away, but I would definitely consider wearing this inside a very loot heavy vault. Definitely worth keeping hold of. Then we have this epic 19 armor helmet, which is really, really nice and has a lot of potential. So I am definitely keeping hold of this. And the 26% crit hit resistance is a pretty good roll. So definitely worth keeping hold of that. And then finally, there's this shield, which is very interesting to me because now as an implicit, we can get up to 40 thorns damage. And my current shield, as you can see, is out of repairs and almost out of durability. So I do need to replace it soon. And I'm not 100% sure if it will be this shield, although it is quite appealing, but it definitely makes me want to try and make some new shields maybe at the start of next episode and just see if we can get a rare or epic shield with thorns damage because that would be really really nice and speaking of next episode i think i'll save my skill point and expertise point for then and there's also a chance that we'll have a new update to explore which would be awesome but even if we don't have an update we will have a ton of fun stuff to do which i am very much looking forward to but until then thank you guys for watching i hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.